just a little bit more conversation about what the current policy guidance is when it comes to ADHD in the military. Um, DOD instruction 6130.03, right, came out in 2018, but was updated uh, last year, 16 November 22, okay, and it was actually called Change 4. Now, 6.28 talks about learning, psychiatric, and behavioral disorders, and it really tells you what is disqualifying for military service. So military applicants with diagnosed ADHD, um, if they meet any of the following conditions, okay? So it says recommended or prescribed educational plan, IEP 504 or work accommodation after the 14th birthday, all right? History of comorbid mental health disorders prescribed medication in the previous 24 months or documentation of adverse academic, occupational, or work performance. Now, if you have a diagnosis of ADHD and none of these things occurred for you, like you didn't have any IEP, you didn't have any comorbid mental, mental health conditions, um, you were able to navigate a diagnosis without any medication over the last couple of years, um, no, you know, issues with ac academic, occupational work performance, and you wouldn't even need a waiver. You could join and not need anything, right? Because none of these things would apply to you. Um, the whole conversation about a waiver comes in when probably one of these things is applicable. And a lot of times with ADHD, generally, this is kind of common. So, so losing hope, like, oh my gosh, I can't join. Well, um, we want to, I want to have a conversation about waiver. So, um, I'm gonna slip, to, I'm gonna skip to the next slide and then I'll talk a little bit more about waivers, but just help you understand if these things, if none of these things apply and you do have ADHD, then you don't need a waiver. If one of these things applies, that's when a waiver has to kind of be the thing that's submitted to determine whether or not um, you're an exception to the policy, because that's what a waiver is. It's basically saying um, there should be an exception made because even though one of these things are true about me, here's um, here's what here's what else you should take in consideration, right? Like maybe I did have an IEP plan, but I I don't you know I don't need it, or I'm doing extremely you know, much better, da, 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 okay? Now, um, there's an article that's written by um, a medical doctor. His name is David Sawyers. He's also a major in the Air Force, and along with the help of Zane Q and Leslie Clark, they wrote an article that was published in 2021. They looked at data that came from 2014 to 2018. Now, this article was really interesting because it kind of just, highlighted some of um, some statistics related to um, this whole conversation about having a diagnosis of ADHD and being in the military. So what I thought was pretty phenomenal about these authors is that they looked through, um, you know, several different medical record type systems like prescription system. Um, they looked at the medical record system to kind of see what diagnosis were being assigned. They looked at um, the, I guess, like the military interest, entrance processing kind of system, like MEPS um, or station, I should say. But they looked at the data that was coming out of their medical examinations. They looked at military medical records. They looked at all of these different sources of medical, reliable sources of medical information to give us some numbers um, regarding like how many people have a diagnosis of ADHD and um, how many of those people with a diagnosis of ADHD actually got treated with medication um, and like at what point in their career did that start happening. So I think I have a slide that highlights that. Um, I'll pull that up in a second. But um, one of the things that they noted, again, was what the DOD policy in 2018 was saying. Um, now, if you know anything about DOD policy back in 2010, it used to be, hey, um, if you hadn't had any medication within the last 12 months of your enlistment, then you could join. Um, and then in 2018, that changed. And it basically said, you know, if you had 
accumulation of medication within the last two years since age 14, then, um, then you know, that would be a reason why you, you could be disqualified for service. That has changed, right? What I highlighted in 2022 was that it's 24 months. It doesn't say anything about cumulative or anything like that. So, so there's a little bit more leverage there. Okay. Um, and then, um, one of the things that they noted was, uh, the air force may have a little bit more flexibility. They look at stability for the last 15 months versus 24 months. But I think, um, that is a waiver. Okay. And then in 2017, um, ADHD and disruptive behavior disorders was the fifth most frequent medical disqualification for first time enlisted active component military applicants. So, um, so that's just an interest in finding that um, out of all of the people who were disqualified for medical service, um, the fifth the fifth highest reason was having ADHD or some type of disruptive behavioral disorder. Okay. They had some other findings. Let me see if we have some of that stuff. So here are some of the statistics that I was talking about the article highlighted. Um, so in 2014, right, we had um, 58,000 service members who had a diagnosis of ADHD. 58,000, right? That's more people that's hanging out uh, than that's what's hanging out, who's hanging out with us for the webinar today, right? That's a lot of people. 58,000 people is a lot of people. Um, in 2018, that number did go from 3.9% of the military force to 2.8. So instead of it being 60, it was close to 40,000. So that's a 20,000 person difference because of the way the rules changed. OK, so that's really interesting because what it shows is that as the rules that govern um, what uh, what qualifies as a diagnosis, I mean, not what qualifies as diagnosis, but as the rules govern, um, you know, what's a disqualifying condition and what is not, that really does change how many people are serving in a military um, with that condition. So they also saw that, of course, that decrease in um, soldiers having a diagnosis um, or military personnel, a lot of it was those people who were first joining E1 through E4. And um, so in 2018, E1 through E4 is probably the lowest, um, the lowest prevalence, meaning the lowest number of soldiers who actually have ADHD. Um, but what was interesting was about 60% of those people from 2014 and 2018 were actually prescribed ADHD medication. 60%. Um, that's more than half. And um, close to 80% were prescribed stimulants. 16.5 to 17.4 basically had a stimulant as well as a non-stimulant. Um, and then 3.6 to 3.9 had non-stimulant medication. And then they also found out that a lot of those um, individuals were maybe age 25 or older. Um, those were the ones that were likely to get medication to manage diagnosis. And just above um, the enlisted rank of E1 through E4, some of them were dealing with divorce, widowed, or some of them were in the healthcare occupation. And maybe because they were learning more about, um, you know, access to care as well as that there is treatment for the diagnosis and the military will, you know, give treatment. 